here's the next project. So Jason just brought this in today. And this item was traded in for credit towards another dresser that we had painted. The um, creamsicle, actual. So the creamsicle sunset one. So if you watch our YouTube channel, you'll see the, the creation of that piece. And of course, there's Petey again. Making sure everything is okay. Um, there is a little bit of a split here in the wood. So once I paint it, that'll come out more. Yes, Petey, I'm showing them. And then there's a little bit here that's scratched up and damaged. A couple of places here. Pretty good gouge. So we will be painting this piece. It does not have a name brand. And it is wood except for the bottoms of the drawers. I don't know why people do that. They do all this wood and then they don't do the bottoms of the drawers. All right, we will update you on this piece as we decide what color to paint it and what we're gonna do with it. This is after one coat of using the Dixie Bell stick slick, sorry, slick stick. Here, let me just grab it. Slick stick. Because this piece was a little bit shiny, because whoever had it before put a little bit of a clear coat with a lot of shine. So you can see, it's just like a primer to give a little bit of a grip. And next, I'm gonna go ahead and go with Dixie Belle Fluff. And that's what I'm gonna be painting this next. You ever get little uh, mm -hmm. globules of paint or when you're sanding? You can just pick it up with a finger once the paint's wet on the thing. You can literally lift items with your finger. Paint off. Okay, and just remember with white. Very sheer shows through. So you saw that I did that. I'm gonna spray again because I'm feeling a little drag on the brush. And now it just glides right on. And I am using a Dixie Bell mini brush, which is what the same brush I use to apply these slick sticks. This first coat goes on pretty quick. See, there's a little cloth you want to take that off. It goes pretty quick because of the um, slick stick that I applied and because I'm spraying with water. Again, I'm going to mist the actual piece itself and the brush. Just give a little less drag. You don't want to do too much. Too much water makes it more like a glaze and with white. 
because you keep, it's just see-through, so there's, it's a waste, so. Unless you're doing it for a special effect. I still want it to be solid white. So if you put a little too much water on it, you just go over it a little bit more. And if you're like me in Tallahassee, Florida, it's very humid. I am painting inside though. So just a little bit of a fan, which I'll turn on in a minute, will help this dry. Because this will dry in about 20 minutes to an hour tops on its own. But I want it to dry a little bit quicker. And so I am going to turn on the fan. I can this, I just didn't want it on. I used a microfiber uh, cloth to, after I sanded to get any stuff off, but I am having tiny pieces of lint, so I picked it up again with my hair and just it off. Okay, that is the first coat of the Dixie Belle fluff, and I'm going to continue to do that on the front of it, and then we're going to let it dry. Now I'm working on the front of this piece. I've got my sprayer, I've got my Dixie Bell fluff, and my Dixie Bell mini brush. I just did the top of it and I turned on the fan, so you're probably hearing the fan. I have a fan blowing on the top because I want it to dry a little bit quicker than normal just because it's white. I want it to dry quicker. That's just preference. Um, if you can let it dry naturally, it's like 20 minutes to up to an hour, I would say, max for me. I'm in Tassie, Florida. I'm inside painting. If I was outside painting, the humidity depends on from direct sun, that kind of thing. From direct sun, it will sometimes crackle it and make it a little bit more shabby chic, which is a good technique at times. So if you want that, use it. Right now, I'm not doing that right yet. So I'm going to, again, I'm using the same brush. I haven't washed it out. That I used for the Dixie Bell slip stick when I used the primer. And this is what you're seeing is just the slip stick. And I noticed in the video it might look kind of bluish. This is actually white. Maybe I could turn on the light above me, but I'm not going to. I've got natural sun coming in. It's such a beautiful day. It is spring break for FSU and the And hopefully you can catch a little bit of this. I am. This is just a very light sand cloth. And because I'm going to be distressing this back a little bit, it does not have to be absolutely perfect, but I will show you. Some cabinets I paint, you you can't see the, the in-between, the, the cabinet. But this one you can. So one of the things I am going to do, which I did with the slipstick, I'm going to remove this. You don't always have to. I'm going to remove this floor. And I'm going to, as you can see, I painted the casing of the stressor before with the slip stick. So I'm going to go ahead and paint the casing. But you can see this in between the doors. And then I'm just going to stick the door back in. I will continue to do this process all along this casings. Again, if it, the casing didn't show that it's flat and it's a uh, more mid-century style and it, it's hidden, I would just paint the drawers straight in and not remove them because it would be you would just see the casing at the edge of that lip. Anytime you have extra paint on your brush, go ahead and use it. Which depends how I was doing that. And I've got the handles inside the door, so you might hear a little ding, ding, ding type stuff. That's just the handles in the door. And one thing I'm going to do with this door is out. Can you see this? I'm just going to hit the bottom of it with the paint that I still have on the brush. I 
don't want the sides to be a little bit uh, distressed. And some of the wood shown through, so I'm not going to make that perfect. But while I've got it out, that's why I went ahead and did it. And while I have it out, these drawers share the same casing with the spot in the middle. I'm just going to go ahead and hit that real quick. And don't worry about being perfect. If you're worried about being perfect, you shan't be doing this because this is just be for fun therapy, revamping, and for the love of painting. You can't just stress out about it. It makes it less fun. I'm going to hit the top of this drawer while I have it out. With the side of my brush, which is still loaded with paint. And you can make this piece go a long way by using this. This is the stuff you would wash out of the brush at the end of the day anyway, so use it. Use it all. Let's see. There. So I don't know if you can see, there's still, because it's a rough edge of the paint, of the wood, and I'm not going to fill it in. If you want to, you can load up your brush of paint and really smush that in. And when you do that, that'll fill the holes. But on this particular one, I want it to be a little raw on the edges. And you probably can't tell what I'm talking about right now in regards to that because the camera is sitting back a couple feet. But we'll get into it later. It has a little bit of a, it's not right there, but it's a, a little bit of fuss. And it's actually a little bit, again, I just use my finger. And because it's chalk paint, it's going to be fine. Comes off with water. <coughs> this chalk paint is water based. It's Dixie Bell. We sell it in our store. And the reason why we sell it in our store is because I've used lots and lots of different paints over these last 19 years, and I just happen to like Dixie Bell the most at this point. I also use other brands like Debbie Beard's uh, DIY paint clay based. I like to use that too. Occasionally, but it doesn't work as well because it's so humid and the clay takes a while to dry for us here in Florida. Um, and there's other paint companies I like too, but right now, Dixie Bell, locally owned Florida company. I like their product and I like their services. So what I'm going to do real quick is add a little bit of water. And you can see, I may have listed that a little too much, so I'm just going to take my brush and go like this. And it's reactivating some of the paint I still have on this brush. And I'm able to get this whole, almost this whole drawer done, just by reactivating with that mister. I hope you can hear me with that fan. I know that fan's loud. I'm going to get the edges, and when you do, go back over. At the top of the drawer. Again, I'm leaving a little bit of the wood showing on purpose. And then I'm going to go back across the front. Get underneath here. Goes across the room, you will see that, and then go across like that again. See? Hit my case here. Case here. Here. And I haven't even reloaded my paint since over here. Now, this drawer. Back here. Get it on the screen. Push it in and I'm going to paint it. I am going to reload my paint now. I'm going to spray my brush a little bit. A little bit of paint. Um, how many layers you have to do, and I think mean, that's a good thing, really. 
I like it. And, oh, by the way, no smells, low VCOs, VOCs. I'm painting inside my house, as you see. And uh, there's no smells, there's no, you know, it's all water-based. I can clean it up in my sink, my kitchen sink, of all things. I just wash it out. There's no harm to the pipes or the sink. Okay, I'm going to continue. You see, I did this third, and those other two aren't done yet. So you see the difference. That's just one coat that's left, and you saw me do it. So I'm going to stop here and do the rest. I have the fan on now, as you can see going across the top of this piece so I can dry it sooner. Hi, JD. This is one coat of Slick Stick and two coats of Fluff by Dixie Belle. And I have the fans on because I'm trying to dry it. You don't have to do this if you're doing it yourself, but I am trying to dry it quicker because I want to just stress it and that's okay for it to dry quicker because it might coagulate just a tad if you dry it with a fan but that's what I want I want it to look farmhouse fresh so that's what I'm doing I also have this piece that I was doing a drop cloth and I have some extra fluff left over so you can see I went over it with fluff this piece is not done by the way <laughs> and um it gives it highlights can you see like right That's a highlight from fluff. And then that's drop cloth, but that's fluff. So that's one way to add accenting. Use what you have left over on your brush. And behind me are these great doors that Jason picked up at a sale, and I think I'm going to keep them. I love them so much. I just can't part with them. And I'm still working on these pieces. Those two, that one, that one, that one. And then there's this piece behind it. So one, two, Three, four, five, six projects at once. Thank you for watching and I'll update you soon. Don't forget to follow us on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Instagram is really good because a lot of photos from our consigners as well. Because we rent booth space at our store, the other side vintage in Tallahassee, Florida. And we have some amazing consigners. Amazing. Add us and we do ship most items. Just add us to Instagram, the other side vintage. Still listening to the Runaways documentary. You might hear that in the background. This is the microfiber cloth. And I'm just wiping off the dust. Literally. Woo! From sanding. Can you see now? The sanded parts. I sanded it back by hand. And then I'm going to clear this dust off with this cloth before I go and seal it. See? some of the distressing you can see on the sides too distressing distressing farmhouse style and the top I've left mostly alone good song by the way okay time to seal it So I am almost done with this project. Sorry, the tarp is on the top right now, but I'm using the finishing sanding um, from Dixie Belle cloth pad. Sorry, pad. And you're just gonna go over these. They've already been sealed. Finishing pad just gives it a little nice 
extra layer of smoothness. I've already sanded this, we've coated it and all that. It just takes a little bit of the, a little bit more of the, uh, I don't know what I'm trying to say. It just smooths it. It makes it like velvet. It just helps with that. So I definitely recommend using these sanding cloths.